Okay, this is a quick tutorial showing how to do a Neutronics simulation. So, this is a tutorial repository and you can access this anytime you like. I'm going to work through this tutorial. So, first of all, you need to have Conda installed. So, there's a few different options here and um, I'm using Mini Conda. And I've already installed that, but um, use whichever one you prefer. Right. So the first step is to clone the repository. So I'm going to open up a new terminal by holding Control, Alt and T. And then I am going to type in these commands. So first clone the repository. So I just highlighted it and then I press the middle mouse button to um, paste it. And that's downloaded this, this whole repository and now I'm going to cd into that directory. So now I'm there, I can have a look and I can see that I've got the same files that I've got up here. Great. So, I'm going to create a conda environment. So this is going to use this environment underscore cad file and then I'm going to activate that environment. So let's just have a look at the environment file to see what's inside there. So we can see this makes an environment called envcad and it has a few conda channels where it looks for software and it installs the paramac and pip and jupyter-cad query. So not really installing much but um, it's still nice to have it in an environment file so that I can do one command install all those pieces of software in one go. So Conda will just take a, a minute or two to do that. So I'll pause the video and I'll be back. Okay, that's just finished installing and if I scroll back up you can see that it's just installed a few bits of software including uh, the Paramac and Python and Jupyter CAD query as well. Okay, so the next stage, this is in the um, README, but it also prints it out here. We do conda activate and then the name of the environment. Okay, so we just run this um, file, but first let's have a look at it. So I'm using VS Code, but you can use any text editor here to open up the the first Python script and have a look at the contents. So this is this is pretty straightforward. We're importing the Paramac and we are making a submersion tokamak. So this has got a few arguments um, to control the shape and the size of the reactor. Um, the most important one for us today is this rotation angle which is set to 90 degrees and um, if you're interested in the full list of arguments, you can see them there in the documentation. But this makes a, a 3D geometry object um, based on these parameters. And then we've got the, the object and we're going to do an export to DAGMC H5M file, where we give it the file name and some mesh parameters to make it um, uh, a higher quality mesh. You can reduce these numbers. And we're also going to export it to a, a, th um, a HTML file, which is um, a 3D portable file that you can view the geometry without having um, CAD software installed. You can, of course, in export it to STEP files or STL files, but that would need CAD software to open up. So now that we're in the environment, and we've read that file, we're going to type python and then the file name. I'm using tab to autocomplete the file name. And that's just going to think about it for a little while and then it will um, save the files. Let's have a look at the next step while that's processing. So we're hoping to get a geometry like this output. Okay. Okay, that's just finished making the geometry, and I'm just going to scroll back up so I can show you what it's done. It's printed out quite a lot to the terminal, 
Um, right, so that's where I, I put in the command Python 1 create diagram C geometry and this is all meshing commands and this is coming from Gmesh now. So Gmesh is doing a 1D and a 2D mesh on the surface of the geometry. And this can take a little while depending on um, how fine you've specified your mesh to be. But after that we should be able to do LL and we should see that there's some new files have been produced. So there's a HTML file there and there's also a DAGMC file. Oh, sorry, there's a HTML file. So we'll open that up and we'll have a look. So this is the um, way of viewing CAD without having a CAD um, piece of software installed. You just need a browser. So this allows me to identify the names of things. So the plasma is obviously that. The blanket is the green part. And um, yeah, you can identify which is which. There's clipping options and all sorts of things in here. So that's very useful. So I'm going to scroll down to the next instruction now. Now, because we installed that environment uh, YAML file, which included Paramac, which in turn includes Moab, we should have a command called mbconvert. So I just put in mbconvert, and these are the command line options. In this case, we're going to convert our H5M file, our Neutronics file, into a VTK file. And that's pretty quick. And then what we can do is launch Paraview which you will have to download and install. If you Google Paraview, it's easy to find. Oh, I have to install it as well. So I've now installed Paraview, and I did that with sudo apt install. So it's already installed now. So I'm going to launch Paraview, and then I'm going to open up the DAGMC VTK file that we made with mbconvert. open and then I click apply and there's my geometry and you can view this in a few different ways so you can have surfaces with edges and the edges are the actual geometry so that's the faceted geometry that uh, you've you've made when you did that meshing and you can control the the size of the mesh elements with those arguments. So that, that looks fine. There's our geometry. It is a sector model, so it's just 90 degrees of a 360 degree reactor. So I'll close that down and move on to the next step. Right, we are now going to make another environment. So this is Conda environment create from a file, and this time it's from a environment neutronics file. So let's have a look at that and just see what's inside there. So here we have um, the name is in Envi Neutronics and we're using the Condaforge channel and it's going to bring in OpenMC point 13 and a few other Python packages for downloading nuclear data and for making VTK files of the mesh result. So nothing particularly difficult there but we're going to we're going to make it from that file with this create command. And that's going to take a, a minute or two, so I'll be right back. OK, that's finished installing. And now we're going to activate it using this command, which appears in the terminal, but we've also got it in the instructions. And then the next stage is to run um, the simulation file. But let's have a look at that before we run it. OK, so that's loaded up. So here you've got a few imports, um, including OpenMC in this data downloader. Um, oh, there's one command here which is useful, actually. This command here, this MB size, is a tool which is included in Moab, a bit like MB convert. But this one allows us to search through the DAGMC file and look for material tags. 
So these are all the material tags that are included in the DAGMC file. And that's why I've chosen these names for the materials in OpenMC. You've got to you've got to match up all of these, so um, you can't miss any. So I've made a material for each material entity that appears in the DAGMC file, and I've kept them really simple. So most of them have just got one element each: copper for the magnets, steel for the casing, uh, iron for the casing. Sorry. Um, hydrogen for the plasma. This isn't supposed to be super precise, it's just um, I want to try to keep it as concise as possible while being a useful example. So in a real simulation you'd have real materials here. Um, and you could use the Neutronics Material Maker for that if you want to look up that package. So I assemble all the materials and then um, put them into a material object which is then passed to the nuclear data downloader which will download all the appropriate cross sections needed for these materials. We'll see that happen in a minute and um, it will also set the cross section environmental variable for the OpenMC cross sections. Um, right, next stage is to make a, a geometry. So a lot of that's done by making a DAGMC universe using the H5M file but there's a couple of extra things you have to do in this case. So we always need a, a boundary surface and this DAGMC file doesn't include a graveyard I should mention. You see there's no graveyard appearing in this list of materials. So I need to include a CSG geometry based graveyard. So this one's called uh, a vacuum boundary type and I've made it a very big radius sphere. So that's the edge of my simulation. I've also got a couple of reflective surfaces in here which will make the 90 degree sector cuts um, for the reflective boundaries on this geometry. So I make, a, I make a complete region by saying below the sphere, below reflective angle um, surface 1 and above reflective surface 2. I then um, make a, a cell from all of these things and I fill it with the DAGMC universe. So that's a, a kind of hybrid CSG DAGMC model right there. And um, that's the geometry done. And then I have a source. This is fairly well commented, but it's just making a ring source for 90 degrees around the circle. And it's got a, a Muir distribution for the energy. I've got a few settings for the simulation intensity and I'm specifying a heating tally. This is just saying record all the heating deposited on all the cells and give me one number for the heating. Um, I've also got a regular mesh tally in here so we'll visualize this later. Where I, so I've made a mesh by specifying dimensions and the corners and I've made a mesh tally by saying score heating on this mesh filter. Um, so I've got the two tally objects together here. So I pass everything into this OpenMC model object, materials, geometry, settings and tallies. And then I tell it to run. And um, well, I guess I don't need that actually. There we go. So let's run that file. Python 2 tab to autocomplete. And this will take a little while to simulate. Um, and to download the nuclear data. So you can see it's found that it needs to get 25 different isotopes. So it's slowly going to download copper, iron, hydrogen. This um, lithium is coming from the blanket, which I believe is made from lithium lead. Yep, that's elements from formula, something I snuck into OpenMC, that feature. And yeah, it's nearly done downloading and then it will start simulating. So I will just pause it briefly. Okay, we can see it finished downloading and then there's the OpenMC logo. It started simulating and it's loading up the now um, downloaded cross section files and it started simulating. So this is going to do 10 batches in total and I've asked to simulate quite a lot of particles for this computer. So this is going to take me a while. I will be back.
Okay, the simulation's finished now. And I just scroll back up so it finished all 10 batches and then it saved a state point file. So we can see this is uh, all the nuclear data that was downloaded, all 25 files. There should be a state point file here. Um, great. So we can move on to the next stage. Oh, yes. So what is the next stage? Right, so we, we um, extract the results from the third script. So code 3 tab autocomplete. And the third script is really small. It imports OpenMC. It imports that OpenMC tally to BTK um, package. And then it opens this state point 10 file. And it gets a tally named heating. And it does a bit of unit conversion on that tally and it prints the result to the terminal. Additionally, this is what the VTK file package does. It, um, it gets the heating mesh and it writes it to a VTK file. So let's run that script and have a look at the terminal. I just, I missed a um, quotation mark in this script. So I'll just put that in now. Another typo. Right, so that's loading in the state point file, which takes a, a little bit of time. And um, writing out the VTK file. So you can see it's reported to the screen that we got 16 MeV per source particle deposited. So that's not bad. We've got some energy multiplication going on in there. Um, each particle, on average, is 14 MeV, and um, we're getting 16 MeV of heat. And it's also written a state point uh, VTK file, which I can load up in Paraview again. And I do open VTK file, and I click apply make this full screen, close down that warning message, and then I select this drop down and I select heating on mesh, and then I'm going to select surface as well, and there's our mesh tally result. Now there's a, a few things you can do to make this easier to see. One of them is um, thresholding. So you can click the threshold button and then the tally make sure that's right at the maximum and this is set to a small number and then we click apply and that will remove all of the um, zero points super so there's our mesh we can also work with the colors a little bit if we edit the color map and we click use log scale we get a little bit better visualization. And then if you want to get a view of your geometry on top of this, you can um, you can load in STL files that the Paramat can make, but you can also load that VTK file that we made earlier. So there's the VTK file, and I'm going to put that in as a wireframe, I think. So then you can see how your um, heating aligns with your result. So I'll just reduce the opacity of that as well. There we go. So there's our mesh tally. And that was how to do a CAD-based neutronic simulation in a few minutes. So the repository is here. Feel free to raise issues or um, comments or make pull requests and improve this example. It's all there for you to have a look at. Thanks for listening. Bye.